You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another incredible episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Pablo. Incredible indeed, Pablo, and my name is Rob, and this is episode number 634, and we are grateful that you would spend a few minutes with us today. Um, Wherever you're listening. Absolutely. Whether it's in the car, in bed, in the fetal position. I hope not. In the office. That implies something bad <laughs> happened. <laughs> We don't want that. Hey, man, someone could be sick in bed and they can't go to work and they're just like, hey, man, I'm just listening to your show. <laughs> that, I suppose that's true. You never <laughs> I know. I hope you feel better. <laughs> Hypothetical person. Yeah. All right, Rob, what are we What are we talking about today? What, what exciting new question gets brought into the mix? You might hear a little sarcasm, but I assure you it's not. It's just enthusiasm. And passion. I'm trying to bring out the energy here and struggling oh, yeah? a little bit this morning. <laughs> so, all right. Not, ev- not everyone's perfect. F- far, certainly not me. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> all right. What about you? Let's just play the question and that will explain the exciting question. Mm. Hey guys, Mike from Elgin, Illinois, trying to find out what the best step would be as far as purchasing an Osmo, either the Osmo or Osmo Plus. It seems like Osmo is the the better choice because I've read online or seen online people being very frustrated with the Osmo Plus and its autofocus and other issues that they're having with the software. You guys heard anything that that's been corrected or anything that that's going to be corrected anytime in the future? Thanks. Appreciate all you do. So there you have it. First of all, thank you for the question, Mike. We know that there are a lot of people wondering about that. We have read, I have actually read a lot about folks having problems with that focus. I mean, you would think it's a great thing. Like, thank um, you for doing that. But if it doesn't work well. So I personally love the Osmo Plus because of the zoom capability, but it definitely has its issues. Just like the Z3 camera has issues on the Inspire One. Um, the video transmission goes in and out a lot. Um, and also the... If you're not used to trusting yourself, Mm. meaning if I press the zoom and I hold it for three seconds and let go as the app is catching up, showing you the video feed, like you, you've got to know when to zoom and when to let go because the app is not like fast enough to essentially keep up with the, what the camera is doing. So it's like anything, whether it be golf or whatever, you get a feel, you develop a feel for how to use whatever resource you're using. Totally, totally. Um, and if you guys have seen my five unique ways to use an Osmo video, which I think has over 120,000 views, um, you can see the different ways that I like to use the regular Osmo. Mm-hmm. And let me just step back for a second. If you guys are not familiar with the Osmo, it is essentially the world's smallest stabilized camera that can be controlled f- from your phone. And don't confuse it with any of the Fui Tech gimbals or the Karma gimbal, Um, they are totally, totally, totally different. And the reason why is it comes down to controllability. Um, The Osmo has an incredible app that you can control uh, movement, speed of movement, exposure, uh, well, not actual aperture control, but like exposure value. There's just so much that you can do with that camera. You can operate it remotely. You can link it to different things. Like it's extremely flexible. So now moving forward back into the Osmo Plus versus the Osmo, which by the way, there's another Osmo called the Osmo Pro. I'll get into that in a second. The benefit of the Osmo Plus is the fact that you can zoom. I've already told you some of the negatives about it. And obviously these have been big deals for other people as Mm -hmm. well. Absolutely. Um, The Osmo itself though is an incredible camera. Um, I have never had focus issues with a regular Osmo, but you don't have zoom, but the camera operates and functions much more flawlessly than the Osmo Plus. Um, I don't know if that's a firmware thing. I'm not sure if it's an integration thing, but the regular Osmo is great for, you know, strapping to the car, um, fixing to, let's say you can't get a drone shot somewhere, you know, riding down with a skateboard and a 15 foot tripod with the Osmo on the top of it looks like the exact same thing as a drone. Right. Just saying. Yeah. So it's all about how creative and flexible you are in the footage and how you want to create it. 
If you're the type of person who has difficulty in moving a camera uh, smoothly, even with the Alpha 6500s and the FDR AX53 that this podcast is being shot on, it does have in-camera stabilization control. So it is like an in-camera gimbal, but it's not anywhere near the capability of an Osmo. The Osmo has so much more um, stabilization because of the roll endpoints and the pitch endpoints. So essentially, how much can the camera roll into independently of the camera body. Right. And in a Sony, it's like maybe 20 degrees. And in Osmo, you're talking like 45 degrees. So a huge so, difference. Huge, huge difference. Also, the Osmo is an amazing uh, gimbal because you can use it upside down, sideways. You can use it in so many different ways. Like really, the fact that that little trigger plays when you're using your Osmo is so key. For example, with a Karma, you cannot use your finger and get this perfectly nice pan and tilt at the same time. On like the app, you perfectly mean? Perfectly smooth, yeah. Right. So if you have, you know, if you're an older guy or you are a service member and for whatever, you don't have the smoothest hands, an Osmo is a really good thing. Mm -hmm. It's a really powerful tool for people who do not have um, the dexterity that others do. Absolutely. I will say, like we let off talking about this with, you do need to spend some time getting used to the touch because it's actually pretty sensitive. Mm -hmm. And so what I found myself doing when I was using it initially was going too fast and then you get ahead of yourself and it messes it all up. So you really do have to go smooth and slow. It just takes practice. Just it do the same shots over and over and over again. And like anything, them. it takes yeah. practice. Deliberate practice. Deliberate. That's absolutely. Kay Anders Erickson, sorry. Good practice. No, deliberate practice. Deliberate practicing the right things though. Yeah, that's called the deliberate practice model. Hijola. <laughs> Anyway, going back to the Osmo. We're looking for a co-host. For... <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. All right, I'm out of here. No, I meant me. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm screwed now. Um, so what happens if the Osmo Plus is having these issues and people like the Osmo, but they want an Osmo with Zoom? Um they want a camera they can control from their phone. So why would you want that? Let's say you want to shoot a scene in another room and the room is really small and you've got to put the camera in the far corner, but you still need to be able to operate the camera. If you have your camera on, let's say, an older Ronin, you've got to be behind the camera to actually change the camera settings, uh, your focus, aperture, everything. Osmo Pro, you could be in another room controlling the camera from your phone. Pretty cool. Getting the, getting the shots that you want. Mm -hmm. um, controlling the camera the way you want it to look. I mean, uh, the Osmo Pro, if you're smart, can also have zoom because the Osmo Pro has detachable lenses. So if I use, let's say, the Olympus. In fact, it's literally staring at me in the face because Ilker lost the lens cap. Um, if you use the 14 to 42 millimeter Olympus lens, you will have zoom control on the Osmo Pro hmm. that's controllable from the app, literally. So if you're like, oh, I want an Osmo Plus because of Zoom, but oh, it's just not working that well, solution, Osmo Pro 14 to 42 lens. That's the micro four thirds lens. In fact, let me grab it really quick. <clears throat> literally, yeah, four, 14 to 42 millimeter. And uh, yeah, this Olympus lens right here, this is it. Little pancake guy. Check it out. You can put this thing right on that Osmo Revolutionize Pro. your Osmo. And voila. Voila. Uh, anyway, guys, I hope that information helps you out in making decisions on an Osmo. Uh, one question I do get all the time is, is the stabilization in an Alpha 6500 as good as an Osmo? And the answer is no, it is not. Uh, you have a lot more flexibility with an Osmo over that camera. Now, guys, there's a tool for every shot. It's just about how flexible you can be with your tools to maximize what you get out of your tools while minimizing your spending. And an Osmo is a great thing for that. Guys, I hope this was helpful. If you have a question, go to askadroneu.com and upload it right now so that we can answer it. I'm really, okay, here's some questions I really want to hear. Okay, um, I was going to ask, please tell the people what you'd well, like to hear No, I just feel about. like I want no, people seriously. to continue pushing this forward because yeah. with all the training that we have out there, there's now a lot of really good videographers. I mean, like looking at Drone U Elite and even looking at the 75 pilots that came to the fly-in, it was awesome. It was awesome because it goes to show that the training that's, my training program that's now taken over five years to develop works so well. 
Like it's just amazing to me. The drills, the exercises, like, sorry, uh, dart drones, everyone else, you don't have this. And there's a reason, um, because experience trumps everything else. So Anyway, as Einstein said, the only way to gain knowledge is through experience. And I firmly believe that. That being said, not here to bash anyone. Just saying, I lost my train of thought. Just saying, very excited about What you're the saying flying. is that there are a lot of people that are already flying well. So, so we, we want to keep helping people fly well, but we want to move deeper and further, particularly with the podcast. Yes, that's exactly what I was trying to say. Thank you very much. It's been a rough morning here. <laughs> no, we're, we're, we're good. Um, <laughs> so things that I really want to get deep down into, like, for example, we had that question about agriculture and the business side of agriculture. It Which seems, is coming soon. And it ke- seems saturated. I love that. But I also love business questions that are associated with drones. Like, for example, um, you know, what about mapping? Like, here's a great question, right? If I have to map a building, can I use my Inspire 2 and my Phantom 4 Pro to map the same building? The answer may actually surprise you. So so somebody asked that question? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I'm not giving the answer to that question because people probably think they know. And unless you've done it, you don't know. All so, right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You just said you would love to get that question. Are you saying if we get the question, you'll give the answer? Totally. Okay. 100%. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, other questions I, I would love... Um, you know, talking about workflow and deliverables with mapping, that's a really big issue. And also another big issue is that whenever you're doing mapping, there's a difference between client visualization and client deliverable and then measurement of client deliverable. So we still have this big hiccup with acquiring data to interpreting data to action to like taking action on data to making it actionable data. Correct. Right. Yes. Yeah. So another thing too, like what's the best LIDAR unit for flying drones? Uh, what if I want to use LiDAR to map stuff? What type of drone would I need for that? What are some entry-level LiDAR units? Uh, why would I want to use LiDAR over mapping? Is the accuracy as good as they say it is? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, continuing on, one thing I would love to do, and I have reached out to the guy to see if we can go have a conversation with him, but Forrest Fenn. You know, the treasure, the treasure guy here in New Mexico, literally 45,000 people have gone to Santa Fe already this summer and have been looking for this treasure. And people have died. Looking for the treasure. Looking for the treasure. Yes. They've asked him to call off the search, right? Yes, they have. But I want to talk to him about, you know, the poem and uh, all the clues. And what if we had a hyperspectral sensor? Hmm. If you were to break down, like, I, I think I know where it is. So like, this is, okay, <laughs> this is fun. This is interesting. I'm so you saying, think that it actually exists? I do believe that it exists. Okay. And if it doesn't exist, when I become a millionaire, I'm putting 200 grand on the desert and doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I'm so doing that. Like, no, it's great. I love, like, his ideology behind it. Like, well, I want to get people outdoors. I want to give people something fun and adventure. Sure. And he says, like, he's like, it is still out there. Here is what is in the case. And it's 20 gold bars. It's a bunch of rubies and gems and diamonds. Like, he's like, literally, like, like, I have a list. pirate treasure kind yeah. of stuff. <laughs> So I want to know what is the box made out of so I can fly my hyperspectral sensor and find a needle in a haystack. Hmm. So I wonder if he'll tell you what the box is made of. I already asked him and he hasn't told me yet. Hmm. But I want to schedule an interview and get him on the show. I think you're going to have to trick him into that question being answered. Well, hey. But he seems pretty bright. He is bright, but I think I'm brighter than him. (laughs) We're talking about a guy who hid a treasure thinking that no one could find it. But as long as it's visible from the sky, it can be found very easily. Did he say that it's visible from the sky? That's another thing I need to figure out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, people might be curious about what the heck we're talking about. Forrest Fenn is an artist who made a, a lot of money in Santa Fe and hid over a million dollars in gold and diamonds. And there's books on it called like In It For The Chase or something where he talks about the whole thing, where he's hidden it, like the whole nine yards. No one's found it yet. He said people have been within a few hundred feet of it. Mm, that hurts. Exactly. Of course, they don't know who they are. That's another thing, too. <laughs> they don't know who they are. So um, anyway, I think it would be really, really cool to even just talk to him about like, what if this? What if this? What if this? Because maybe one day mm. someone's going to fly an MQ-9 and just map the whole state of New Mexico <laughs> 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 with a hyperspectral sensor looking for copper only. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, really, I think the point of 
having him on the show is to showcase like, look, living the drone life is a big adventure. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. But also in realizing like, okay, we could use hyperspectral sensors to find this treasure. What else could we use hyperspectral sensors for? I think it'd be great to get him on the show. It'd be a lot of fun. He's done interviews, so I don't know why he wouldn't. I mean, like yeah. written interviews. I don't he know why he would He did an interview with that Josh Gates guy who does the Expedition Unknown, mm -hmm. which is... Oh. Uh, you know what, dude? You're really good on TV, but the the content on there sometimes is just like there's you could do this better. Like you could have more fun. That's what I'm hoping living the drone life will be. Awesome. But anyway, very cool. So go deeper with the questions. That's kind of the moral of the story. Yeah, and ask the, the tough business questions. Like maybe what we should do is a sales call on the show. Yeah. Call people. To I, be like, we hey. actually have those questions, and. Let's call just say we real, haven't we haven't let's gotten call to real them. people. Yeah, just like you did on the webinar. A that few was actually back. really fun. Yeah, and it was effective. It was, effective. and people learned from it. People were like, "Wow, I'm just not built for sales." That's what someone told me, and I'm like, "No, dude, no." Do you know what the secret is in life? The law of attraction. What you believe, you become. And I'm gonna leave you on that bombshell. That's gonna do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You.